Hello ladies and gents, I am Devin, and welcome back to From the Depths Adventure Mode from a comfy abode at the bottom of the ocean. So, what are we going to do this episode? Well, firstly, I would quite like to make this thing maneuver and for some reason it's not staying straight. Why are you rising up? Oh, it's because I've run out of power. Okay, just hold the guns. I won't stop tilting up upwards. I'm holding on to the... Oh, not, I'm not holding on to the pack. Okay, now I'm holding on to the pack. Just trying to charge the battery up a little bit. Right, there we go. I've spent all my resources on RTGs. That should now give me enough power to at least do something. Uh, infuriating. Let's figure this out. There we go. I've sold a load of stuff and it's leveling up. But also, it does seem to be rebuilding this section at the rear, which is annoying because that section is not actually connected. So spending all these resources to build something I just deleted, that's really annoying. What I'm doing, I'm just adding some props at the rear because I'd actually like to start moving around. But not very quickly, but I can just start maneuvering. That means I can actually start gathering resources. So, put those there. Let's put a couple of rudders on. Good. So, I actually now have some stuff. Come on. Let's go all the way down there. Using the F3 trick to go to mouse movement, and then can sort it straight around to the normal movement afterwards. Let's zoom out a bit. And I'd like you to, formation. to head over that way. I don't actually want you to rise. Just stay low in the water. So I might have to try and find if you've got any more hydrofoils and delete those. Yeah, this is odd. My ship is actually rising up as it's moving forward. Some I've probably got some of these props set up incorrectly. So I'm just going to try and make myself lower down a bit more. I don't want it to go up in the water. So these should actually... Yeah, they're actually pointing downwards, so they shouldn't be doing anything. They probably are. But they shouldn't even be attached to the ship anymore. I'm actually being bombarded by some heavy torpedoes at the moment. That's not very good. I need to try and improve my land systems because I don't think they're strong enough to take them out took a right hit there as you can see load blocks have been damaged what I'm now doing I am going to spawn in my little micro gatherer sub which I built in last live stream so to place up there and then get some, um, some repair tentacles we don't need too many of these guys and then I need to edit this little guy because unfortunately control system isn't up that well at the moment since it will go to around about minus 20 because that's all I could do in the designer whereas this is minus 500 and straight away it gets shot at that's unfortunate minus 180 that'll have to do again minus 180 that'll again will have to do it's going to be getting shot at by a lot of lasers that's a meteor of course it is. Yeah, it's not got much fuel left. That means it's going to run out of energy and then it's completely useless. Excellent. It's one way to stop firing at me. The great thing about ball turrets is that they can aim in any orientation like this, which is really handy. It's aiming all the way up, firing at something over there for me, which is nice. Fantastic! The resource sub has gone and gathered one of the X's so far, so I'm out to 13,000 material once more. Unfortunately, I am still very, very low on power, so it's probably not going to be too much use for me at the moment. Still, it's a good start. Not that much is happening at the moment. Uh, rockets are firing and that. I'm just going to go around and delete a ton more blocks. I basically want to get rid of these entire side pontoons. I feel that they're basically 
holding me back. I need to improve my ship and they are in the way. It's times like this where I wish there was a area delete function. This takes ages. I'm trying to remove this engine. Because even, even though it's a nice engine, I don't actually want something this efficient on my adventure craft because it takes up so much space. I'd rather use a more inefficient engine and work and basically not have it running all the time. So that's something I will have to work on. It does mean that for the moment I need to try and remove it. Because this guy is actually moving further away and not turning properly. So a little path view. It keeps turning around, going further and further away from the desired target. I've made a couple more adjustments to the uh, little submarine. I had a couple more roll props and also some rudders, which will definitely help it turn. It actually seem to be heading towards its target now, rather than in some random direction, which is considerably better. Wow, some of these resource zones are pretty large. Look at that, 4,000, 20,000, that one's 300, so it's gonna be an odd one. That's another 24. There's still tons of vessels which I'm currently engaged with. What's that one over there? Another 10k, another 9, and then a couple of ships there, Desecrator, Retaliator, Corruption, another 9, yikes, this is resources everywhere. Ooh, a pretty combat going on over here. The cathode is fighting this thing, which is, I think it's the Desecrator, yes. Oh, well, look at that block confetti. This has just detonated the one of the guns. Yeah, this rear gun's been detonated. Goodness, that is quite the laser stream. Yeah, that, that looks an amazing ship. Misses its target though, but still, that's really nice. Fantastic, my little drone has gone and collected oh, 15,000 resources, heading over to go pick up that load, and then we'll come and deposit them back in the adventure raft, which has now got 40k resources on board, which is nice. Excellent, my submarine has gone and captured all the resources that hasn't get them all because I didn't have enough space and it appears that the X was removed which is a bit of a shame but no matter I should hopefully get yeah, getting close to resource range again and once within that we'll be able to transfer them straight across to the main craft which will be amazing here we go about to transfer all the resources as this little black speck crosses the green line they will then begin transferring materials and resources to one another. So there we go, now within the same resource group. And there we go. 21,000 transferred in one go. Moving out. Moving awesome. Out. And then little bits here and there. As it just evens up. But it was all sent over nicely in one go, which is awesome. That gives me now 50,000 resources or just shy of that to play with and also got these two other locations or these three other locations to go grab the resources of as well as that salvage and a downed warlord ship which I think run out of fuel yes it's run out of fuel and it's at the bottom of the ocean but it's still actually full health a bit like myself really and another couple of big resource zones there as well putting me in a good position to actually begin work heavily on my ship. What I've decided to do, I've decided to pull the Dauntless into the sandbox mode in order to clear out these rear blocks. As you can see, there still are a load which should be disconnected from the ship. So all these rocket launchers shouldn't even be connected. So hopefully when I delete one of these blocks, the 
framework will update and everything will delete. There we go. Let's delete one. All those components which are unconnected are now falling away from the ship. That's a lot there of components which are falling off. And that means that when I save this and then retrofit the blueprint to the one in the adventure mode, it will all be nicely updated. And so I won't have to worry about all of these components. For example, I've also got these jet engines here, which I don't want. So let's replace those with some actual props, like so. That will actually allow me to move a fair bit faster, I believe. Again, just delete all these components because of the huge amount of lag I am experiencing in the adventure mode itself is making this sort of thing remarkably difficult because the blocks don't update properly. So what I've done, I have just removed the engine and I'm now removing the current laser system as well. All of this will allow me to have a huge amount of resources for use in adventure mode and allow me to place down a much more powerful set of weaponry or just do a massive retrofit and make myself float again. At the moment, let's just delete as many of these internal components as I can while it isn't laggy. There we go. That's those now fully removed. So the engines are gone, the lasers are gone. All that's left are now a few particle accelerators and the missiles and torpedo arrays. Excellent, so shall save this as the retrofit and then go back into adventure mode. Here you can see my avatar trying to repair that large section at the rear there. So let us go into the retrofit mode, go V. So I currently have 49K. So retrofit and I go to this one and retrofit and 45. Chugs around a bit. And look at that. A huge amount of resources. I have 100, 102,000 material now after selling those two laser systems. That's basically where the majority of the resources has come from. Though some of this rear section was heavy armor. So that would definitely have made an effect as well. Go for the weaponry. So then everything can start firing once more and see where I'd like to go. Returning to form a now. So we go over a sub, moving over that way. What have we begun adding? I've begun adding a small laser system in here. This is inside the turret well. It's gonna be expanded out towards the rear and fore of the craft. And this for now, will actually be utilize, utilizing this turret to fire at various targets because the laser has superior range over the particle accelerator. It won't be doing anywhere near as much damage, but it will actually be nice and accurate. What I do need to do though is add a local weapons controller because I do not have one at the moment. So let's quickly add one in, add a fail safe and a actual wireless receiver. There you go, my triple laser system is actually now firing. Let's see what it's actually shooting at. So the target being attacked is a Lazarus of the Grey Talons, and I'm not being very accurate with it, it seems. Though I am shooting at what <laughs> radar information I have on it, which is pretty atrocious. One thing you may not be aware of is that Q-switches can actually be shared between couplers. So this coupler is connected to four, that's these four couplers. And this one is actually connected to two. So this one, this one, and this one. They're connected to the three and the four. It's quite useful as it will allow me to set a much higher AP without using as much space, which is quite nice, really. This can be accentuated even further using a system like here. Here we go, I have my laser set up here. 
So this is all of the frequency doublers to ensure a very, very high AP. So that's 85 AP, which will give me full damage against heavy armor because it is 2.11 times the value of the AC. And heavy armor has an AC of 40. So we need double, which is 80, and then 1.1 times that is another four and a little bit. So 85. The amount of damage though is very low, considering the actual number of cavities is minuscule. But what little damage there is will be done at full damage, which is amazing. So I've actually improved the laser quite significantly and also the power battery. So let's see how well it's actually doing against this small group of ships. So accuracy is leaving much to be desired. Missiles, yep, missiles are coming out of the water. The laser is firing. You can see it just poking out the water there. And it is hitting its target, though not really much damage being dealt, but that's because it's barely hitting. Once it gets a little bit closer, though, and accuracy becomes less of a problem, I believe I will actually start doing a significant amount of damage. Missiles are falling short. The torpedoes are shouldn't be firing at this target. thought I had them set accurately, but maybe not. Oh, the missiles are firing at the small flyers. So I have hit. I believe they've just destroyed one. Yeah, big explosion there. That's good. All those hits at the rear there. Excellent. Let's destroy that target. The other one, though is still alive, but looks like it has been damaged. Next barrage of missiles will probably hit that and destroy it, though the particle accelerator is having it a go at it as well. Oh, there's the other airplane being shot down by the missiles. You can see just the fragments there in the distance. Hopefully that actually comes out in the recording. A big spam blast over in that direction. Particle accelerator hits, taking some components out. They didn't really have a very strong surge throughout the craft there. Missiles, though. Missiles hit the four, breaking it into the main hull. They're nice and strong, and if they do detonate any of those APS guns, that will mean a significant hole will be made number of explosions going on there. I think that just might be ammo caches though, not an APS explosion. Although that one looks like it might... Yeah, it looks like actually one has been detonated. It's left and right ones there. One hasn't got a gauge. Here come the next barrage of missiles. Some several actually bounce off. That's weird. hits. The engines just popped, must be damaged, and the exhausts damaged, so we're going to lose some altitude or shields are going to flicker at the very least. It is trying to shoot at me, but it doesn't seem to have any very much success of it. I still have all my blocks. The next layer of missiles, though. These will probably break, break his back. Hit the other side, though. into the central APS guns there. And there we go, one has been removed, the spin block destroyed. There the go the torpedoes again, and here come the missiles. Ah, it actually has flak missiles, trying to shoot them down, CRWS, nice. Good hits in the belly there. Oh, and the main gun on the rear there hit with both weapons, completely detonated and fell to pieces. This thing is losing stability. 
is now shooting directly down, so I expect it will start hitting me. Yep, lost a few blocks there. But nothing major. You can see where my ship is, because all the darn seagulls are there. And seagulls are following me. Yep, and there come the missiles out. And there, oh, there's my ship. So you just got those cannons to try and shoot down missiles, but only a couple hit. The accuracy is a bit too low. Good hit there. Took another one, the APS out. Almost cut the whole ship in half, in fact. Oh, another explosion there. Another APS gun falling apart. Now it's a bit lower, the laser can continue to fire. And now it's at this range, it will probably do a little bit of damage. Or not. Explosions racking through it again. Big heavy armour beam in the middle, which will not fall apart easily. But, it is too damaged. That is another kill. Basically just done with the missiles. I was hoping the lays would do something, but apparently not. Ship has spawned in and my torpedoes have almost reached their target. So, let's see how they do. We've got lasers that are also firing. Oh, but, oh, the torpedoes, oh, they're just out of range. Oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. I'm now working on removing the pontoons because I want to move this ship into more of a single hull design. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to go about that yet, but I do know for a fact that I would quite like to get rid of the pontoons themselves. So, just need to go over and delete all the connection points to make those fall off. And they'll probably have to pull it into designer because of the lag not letting things delete properly. But we'll just see how that goes. So the laser is only firing at a thousand pulse damage at the moment, which is very low. I want to try and get that probably around about five thousand, which will be really nice. Oh, it just took a couple of massive hits of torpedoes. Good grief, those hit hard. Wow. Got an anti-torpedo anti system, you're meant to be functioning. Uh, quickly place a prefab down. Quick place this LAM system down. Need a multi-purpose laser. And then quickly a load of munitions defense nodes. Right, hopefully they'll be able to actually stop some of the missile torpedoes inbound. That was considerably a lot of damage dealt in a very short space of time. And there we go. Now the lambs is functioning. Now actually have some up. Right, let's now put some metal protection around this. I'll actually keep hold of this. It's a decent, decent setup. It's good to have one which is actually very powerful. Lamb, excellent lambs are keeping me safe from the enemy missiles. That is good. Ooh, just took another battering of hits. This time, a massive spray of shells just sailing down. I did a significant number already. Oh, this is really irritating. This ship is directly above me, and it basically makes it impossible for me to hit. I can hit with the particle accelerator, but the lasers are too high up and almost all my missiles have already been destroyed by a load of torpedo fire because I didn't have my lambs pointing in the right direction. I have a decent laser system now but it is pointing in the wrong direction. It can't aim all the way up which is quite annoying. <laughs> Look at all these torpedoes dolphining out. They're aiming at that thing so they're launching straight up and then they're like bouncing up on the water surface. Oh. Looks like though a missile hit that though. Some more components falling off it. 
Yeah, it's doing okay. Oh, there comes another missile. Ooh, some nice hits. Are oh, falling in between there. The vertical lands aiming up, shoot them down. Wow, none of my missiles even broke above the water there. Just shot them every single one down. Well, there we go. Bang, bang. Poor missiles ain't having any chance. Wow, despite adding even more laser components, I'm still not doing very much damage. Mainly because my power is so low. I'm actually trying to power this entire thing via RTG, which is honestly a little bit excessive. I should just use some highly efficient engines that would be much more effective. Still, if I am able to power the entire thing via RTG, it would make for a rather insane craft because it would have no upkeep whatsoever, just a huge, huge cost. Because uh, I think it's probably around about 70, 80,000 at the moment, maybe more. Oh no, 790,000, there we go. <laughs> I meant that, I meant, you know, well, like 70, I meant 700, but you know. Yeah, that is quite insane. And no way near is it as powerful as a 1 million RP craft. Still, it is doing well. Still mainly doing its damage via those missiles, though. So they're the ones which come in and do the damage. So there we go. Hitting there, doing good amounts of damage. There's only a few of them, but consistent damage can't is always good. Look, just knocked off another gun there. Nice. And here comes another salvo. Off go. Yeah, that gun's falling off there. I think it's just hit another one. Oh no, that one's still firing. I thought it'd been knocked off as well. Yeah, lasers aren't doing much, but the cannon is. The sub is also doing good work. It's gone and gathered a few more of these spent nodes around here. There were some pretty large ones. Another 30 odd thousand down there. We'll pick that up. These ones only a few hundred. So it is good, but they're nowhere near as vital. I hope that means the torpedoes will fly towards it. Yep, there they go. No, they're diverted. Ah, the hot... Goblin's also in the drink now. Yep, Hobgoblin and the Apollo both in the water. That makes some easy pickings for my ship. No, those torpedoes just go sailing past. This one, though, should hit. Do a good amount of damage. Kaboom! Nicely done. Nice hit there. Didn't seem to detonate anything. All these torpedoes are coming in though. Nice big spread. I'm trying to shoot a couple of them down, but that's not going to be enough. <laughs> the explosions aren't showing, but the blocks are just disappearing. Excellent. That's basically destroyed it. Apollo is also doing, going to go down as well. There's two damaged. Awesome. And the Hobgoblin will also be two damaged soon, I reckon. And the, missile, uh, the missiles are falling a little bit short. Must be under the water. It's like in the water, so the missiles are having a bit of difficulty aiming at it. But it does mean that the torpedoes won't. First load of torpedoes went against that target. Receiving. Yeah, see the missiles, they bounce and hit water. It's going nearby. But a few do hit, breaking components. But it's those, that array of torpedoes inbound is going to be the big one. The laser's still firing against it as well. Oh, big explosion. 
Yeah, the torpedoes, they're just gonna annihilate this thing. There they go. Two damaged. So, I came to begin episode 29, and I noticed something a bit of a problem. When I loaded the save, my ship was repaired, and my game time had gone back almost two hours. I believe Steam Cloud has updated and fixed my save for me, which is infuriating. So about half of this current episode is now lost, and so what I'll begin doing at the start of the next episode is pretty much the same as what I've done for most of this episode, which is repair, rebuild, build up a giant laser, and what I will then do is integrate these missiles into the main hull, which I hadn't done as of yet. In order to explain this, I will actually be selling the pontoons as quickly as possible and grabbing these materials, and that will hopefully give me enough material to get this underway as quickly as possible, so I won't have to spend the entire episode rebuilding. Infuriating, but it's what happens now and then when you forget to turn off a Steam Cloud and the game crashes because you've been running it for far too long. Anyway, that's all for this episode, so thank you very much for watching this episode of From the Depths with myself and Diffin. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below, as it is always great to hear from you a lot. Otherwise, that's it for me for now, and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out.